Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Olivia here with Olivia's Romantic Home. And in today's video, I am so excited to share with you 20 DIY Dollar Tree Mackenzie Child inspired decor crafts. So this is another episode in my huge I Love Fall series. I love to share with you guys how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a teeny tiny budget. And I am totally crutching on Mackenzie Tiles lately. Now their prices are a little bit steep for me and maybe you too. So here are some amazing decor crafts that you guys can make at your home and not have to break the bank. This is a compilation video of all of the McKinsey Tiles decor crafts that I have done in the last couple of weeks. So you guys can totally binge watch this, get inspired to recreate a high-end designer decor craft on a budget. Let's go ahead and plug in those glue guns, get out your glitter and paint, and let's get to crafting. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I found this super adorable McKinsey Tiles charger. It was $65. I knew we could use some of the Dollar Tree chargers and so I'm just going to go ahead and spray paint this charger with some white Rust-Oleum matte spray paint. It is my favorite spray paint um, and I feel like it is worth the four dollars a bottle that you um, spend to get the little bit better spray paint. So I'm taking the painter's tape and then I'm just adding stripes down the plate and I always start in the center and then work my way out on each side and that should give you a cohesive look and it doesn't have to be perfect remember so give yourself grace and now I'm taking the painters tape and I'm just going to run it down the opposite way and that's also going to give you your little checkerboard squares so you all could do stripes or you could do checkerboard squares whichever one you're in the mood for again I did want to dupe that Mackenzie Childs charger and a charger is just a base plate that goes underneath your plate if you're wondering what I'm talking about with the charger so now I'm taking some acrylic black craft paint and I'm just going to begin to paint each square I always lay down a base base coat of the base the, of the color of square that I'm using. Now, if you don't care for the black and white, that's fine. You can always do pink or yellows or greens or whatever color is in your home decor. Choose that color. Customize it to suit your fancy. I have seen so many of you all that are in my free Facebook group page over there um, and join me over there. It's super fun. Um, painting all different kinds of designs and different colors and checks and you guys have so many amazing ideas. Thank you all so much for sharing. I just love to see what everybody's up to. You all are so inspiring and so amazing. So anyway, um, but I'm going for the black and white check. I do want this to take me through uh, summer and into fall. So I'm just continuing to paint these black and white checks. And I will say that I have so much fun with this. I don't know why it's a bit tedious, but it's also really relaxing for me for some reason. I know the pattern that I'm going to paint. And even if I make a little goof, like right here, I made a little goof. Um, you can just wipe it off or paint over it with some white paint. So it's super easy to fix. And again, customizable to suit your colors, which I love. You can just get so creative with this pattern. Mackenzie Childs, um, they were artists and they were so creative and inventive um, with their designs. I just really love the whimsy of it and the fun of it. So have fun with it, customize it to suit your fancy and don't be too hard on yourself if you have a little oopsie here and there. Now here is the fun part for me when I get to go in and do the gold rim and the little accent points. So just dragging a little bit of white and gold through some of those checks. And then I'm using that gold paint marker. I found this actually at Michael's. They do have one from Dollar Tree, but the tip on it was a little bit harder for me to work with. But depending on your budget, um, the gold pen I believe was about $5 and then you can use your coupon, um, but it does have a really nice gold finish. So here's how I'm adding it to my tablescape. I just have this little Dollar Tree bamboo um, placemat underneath and then the Dollar Tree charger that we painted in the checkerboard style and then this little sunflower plate that we also hand painted. This is from Dollar Tree and I saw the sunflower tablescape at a really high-end decor store last weekend. They were selling their plates for $25 
plus. I mean, they were super expensive in my opinion. Now I'm not knocking anybody that pays $25 for a plate because I've been there and paid some money for some things. Um, but I just thought that we could dupe this with Dollar Tree supplies on a budget. And then here's that little Dollar Tree. It's actually supposed to be a hand towel, but I made it into a napkin just by folding it under and then adding those little DIY napkin rings that I shared with you guys. Had and it. then I want to create this really beautiful floral vase. Mackenzie Childs has this line in um, their decor for garden that's like really beautiful with all of these florals. And I really can't justify spending over a hundred dollars on a vase. And so I decided just to make my own. I'm adding a healthy layer of Mod Podge. And then I'm just going to take this napkin and go directly on to the vase. This vase is going to sit close to my mantle. So it's pretty much only going to face outwardly in one direction. Um, so I'm really okay with kind of some of the edges of the napkin showing through, but I do end up covering them. So now I'm going to take another layer of Mod Podge and just gently Mod Podge the front of that and that way it gives it a nice coating. Now for the next step, I'm going to take another napkin, again, pulling apart those white layers, and then I'm just going to kind of measure it to see the size. I do want to cover up some of the edges over here, and you could get really creative with this and cut out all of the flowers and really do, you know, a perfect decoupage but I just was not in the mood to do more cutting after I did the little flower petal project. And so I decided this was really pretty and fun and whimsical. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add another layer of Mod Podge on top of this. And it did cover rather nicely. Now I also decided to add in some more of the flowers. So I did cut out one of the larger flowers just to kind of cover up one of the little spots where there was a seam, which you all can get so creative with this and have fun with it, relax. If you don't have these napkins, you could always use beautiful tissue paper or any kind of really pretty napkin that you might have on hand. So I popped some beautiful roses and a couple of little purple flowers that I had floating around in my floral stash. And look at how gorgeous this turned out. Oh my goodness, I just think that these flowers are so beautiful for summer and nobody would know that this is a Dollar Tree tin. Again, get creative, use some pretty napkins or tissue paper or just cutouts or whatever you have on hand that's absolutely beautiful. I am crushing on this and for only a dollar and some change with the napkins, For the next at Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take another one of the Dollar Tree ceramic pumpkins and this one already comes in white, but you could always paint one white. And then I'm going to take my Sharpie and just draw lines down my pumpkin. So what I want to do with this pumpkin is create a Mackenzie Childs inspired mini pumpkin. I'm then going to draw lines around my pumpkin to create this square. So I ended up for this little ceramic pumpkin, I drew four slots down. So I hope that makes sense to where there's a little checkerboard here. Now, 
I have had some of you all tell me that you're doing your checkerboard pattern with a Sharpie marker, which you could totally do. I wanted to try it to see if it works, and it actually does. You may want to have a couple of markers on hand because the tip might get kind of dull. Um, I usually paint mine, which can be a little bit more tedious as well. So I did go ahead and color in a couple of them just to show you guys that this is something that's attainable and easy to do. You could also look for a Sharpie that has a wider tip that might work as well. And they do make paint markers. So those are some tips. Now I decided to switch to a paintbrush and I'm using a smaller tip paintbrush. That way I have a little bit more control over painting my little checkerboard shape here. So I'm just going to continue to go in with my checkerboard um, paint and I am using a glass acrylic paint that you can get at Michaels. However, you don't have to use a glass paint. My Michaels was actually low on paints and so this was one of the options and I thought I would try it and it actually works pretty well. You do have to give it time in between coats to dry. So just some little tips there. I want to encourage you guys to try this. It's not as hard as you think and it's only a $1 pumpkin. So if you mess up, you could always paint over it or just give yourself a little grace and have some fun and go for it. And here's how my pumpkin looked. I did use two coats of paint and I also used a gold paint marker to outline my little checkerboard squares. They sell the paint markers at Dollar Tree and I found one at Michael's that I like that has a little bit wider tip than the Dollar Tree one. But here it is on top of this beautiful topiary and we are actually going to create this topiary on a teeny tiny budget. I am so excited to share this with you guys. So I found this topiary on the McKenzie Child's website for $750. It was discounted to $350, but I knew we could create it using Dollar Tree and budget friendly supplies. So I'm starting out with this Waverly white chalk paint and one of these Dollar Tree planters. But if you guys can't find this Dollar Tree planter, that's okay. You can always go to Walmart and find a plastic planter and it doesn't have to be square. It can really be any size. In fact, I would have probably preferred for mine to be round, but I'm trying to use what I already have in my craft stash. So I'm taking my chalk paint and I'm chalk painting a nice generous layer of chalk paint on the entire planter. And then I'm going to let that dry for about an hour and a half and then go back in and chalk paint it again. I think I used three coats just to make sure it was really coated really well. Now I'm taking some painter's tape and I'm going to create stripes with my painter's tape and my Sharpie marker. I want to do stripes on this planter um, to kind of create that really cool Mackenzie Childs look. You could also go back in and do a checkerboard pattern, which I will probably do on another topiary design. But for this one, I decided stripes was the way that I wanted to go. So once I had my stripes uh, marked out, I'm going to go in with a wider paintbrush and just paint my stripes down the front of the planter. So again, give yourself some grace. This really doesn't have to be perfect. If you study the Mackenzie Childs designs, they're not perfect. And really any hand painted um, object or item that you see like in a high end designer boutique is going to have some flaws in it. So I think that's what I really love just to keep in mind when I'm painting is that it doesn't have to be perfect. It really can, the imperfections can be really beautiful and make it look more handmade rather than manufactured. So that's just a little tip for you guys on that, but continue to paint your stripes, take a deep breath and have fun with it. And here's how it looked when I was finished painting my stripes. I did paint another layer of paint over that. Now I'm using my Arteza Gold Paint 
paint. This is a really pretty metallic gold. You could also use a metallic craft paint really from any from any craft store or Walmart. This is just an acrylic Arteza paint, which is just a really nicer um, acrylic paint, but again, any will do. And I did use about two layers of that. And so here's how that planter looks once it's done being painted, but there's more steps and more layers. And I'm promising you guys, I'm gonna share with you how to build this entire topiary. I have been drooling over the Mackenzie Childs one for months now, and I honestly wasn't sure, sure that we could do it on a budget, but here we go. Now we're gonna take this little candlestick. I found it at the thrift store for $2. Dollar Tree also carries a candlestick about this size. I can't find them in my stores. I know a lot of people do find them, but you can also check Walmart or your Dollar General. So I chalk painted it white with two layers and now I'm going in and I'm hand painting a checkerboard pattern. I will tell you that this was very tedious. This is a little bit more of an advanced um, project. I had a hard time with it. So if you're nervous about it, you could always just leave this um, solid one color, or you could just paint stripes, or you could go for it and do a checkerboard and redo it about three times like I did. <laughs> I admit it was really tough for me. I don't know why the candlestick is tough, but I will get better as I go along. So here was my final attempt and what I'll share with you guys. I did just decide not to trace out lines and just do a checkerboard pattern freestyle by hand, which actually ended up being easier for me for whatever reason, I'm not sure. Um, but I went ahead and painted my checkerboard pattern. I used two coats of the black paint and then I went in with my gold paint marker and I just outlined the um, checkerboard pattern. But this is at the base of the planter, so it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. And then here's what it looks like when I finally got done. Now I'm gonna use my E6000 glue, which you can get at Walmart or the craft store, and it is gonna be a heavy duty bonding glue. It does have a bit of an odor, um, but it is going to help this planter stay on my candlestick. And then I'm gonna use my hot glue for that temporary hold so I can work with this project without it breaking loose. And so I'm just gonna run a little bit of hot glue around where, kind of in and around where the E6000 glue was and voila, there we have that. Now it is attached and ready to roll. Now this is another part that I'm gonna share with you guys, super fun. Okay, so Dollar Tree is going to be putting out carvable pumpkins. You're gonna to wanna to grab a couple of these because they're amazing for DIYs. They don't quite have them out in stores yet, but if you're a pumpkin crazy girl like me and you have some left over from last year, or if you have really any pumpkin that's going to work for a topiary, go ahead and chalk paint one or two of those white. I ended up only using one and you do want to chalk paint it probably about two to three coats to get a really good layer but these are awesome for a topiary and I'll show you guys why in just a sec but that Waverly white chalk paint thank you my follower Janice girl you just rocked my world when you sent this to me in the mail I was so thankful so a huge shout out to Janice for sending me some chalk paint we're gonna be chalk painting a lot of stuff because she sent me an extra large container of it. I've been out for weeks, so it's a big deal. <laughs> anyway, I decided to go ahead and make this one the striped pumpkin. So I'm gonna do three pumpkins in my topiary, and this one's gonna be the striped one. Again, I'm just using a Sharpie marker to trace out my lines, and then I'm gonna go back in and paint the stripes, similar to how we did the planter. You're just gonna trace it out and then paint it. I am going in with acrylic black paint and I'm just going to pull the stripes down as I go. This was relatively easy, although the foam carvable pumpkins that Dollar Tree puts out, they're a little bit bumpy. So I will tell you that it did take a good heavy layer of at least two coats of that acrylic paint to get the good coverage that I desired. Now I'm going to make my checkerboard pumpkin and this pumpkin is a little bit larger than the Dollar Tree carvable pumpkin and to be honest with you it came from Michael's. I used my half off coupon and got it for about 10 to 11 dollars. So I did go ahead and draw the stripes down the pumpkin and now I'm going to draw rings around the pumpkin to create my checkerboard pattern. This is similar to that smaller pumpkin that we created except for it's just going to be on a larger scale. Now because you're not going to see the bottom of the pumpkin I didn't worry about doing detail checks. If you guys can see up underneath there there's not any detailed checks underneath the pumpkin. I just didn't think that was necessary and it would have made a whole extra step 
up. Um, and also I do notice that some people when they're painting these checks, they mark an X so they don't skip the pattern. That might be a little helpful tip. It seems like the longer I practice painting these, the better that I've gotten and I don't skip the pattern nearly as often. But you can always go back in with some white paint if that does tend, if that does happen to you. Also, I didn't show it in this um, painting, but I use a little bit of gold paint to drag through the paint on my second layer of painting. To be honest with you, after standing and painting this many pumpkins, I did have to sit down for just a little bit in my living room, pop on a show, and do more of the detail work there. But it's super easy. All you guys do is take your paintbrush and drag it in a little bit of gold or white paint to give it some accent, or you can just leave it as is, and that's super fun. If you're not patient to paint these, I have seen some checkerboard and harlequin pattern pumpkins at the at-home store and some of the different craft stores. So check those stores. All you have to do is remove the stem and you could easily make a topiary, again, if you don't have the patience. The other idea for you, if you didn't want to hand paint a pumpkin in this style, is you could use a napkin, a Mackenzie Child's napkin, and decoupage the napkin onto the pumpkin, which I am going to share a DIY with you all on that because I want to give everybody so many different options. And the other thing is, is I'm going to share with you guys a lot of different fall decor styles. Like in the last video I shared with you guys, I shared with you all neutrals. So this is more of a bold black and white style. The last one was neutrals. I'm going to be doing some pinks and blues, just all different kinds of colors and styles. So definitely stay tuned. We're going to have a lot of fun. Now, I'm going to take one of those Dollar Tree gift boxes, and this was actually from my sweet friend, Wendy. She sent this to me, and I just popped a hole in that gift box. It's the bottom of it flipped over, and then I popped a hole in that pumpkin, and then I'm using a floral stem, and I'm just going to push the floral stem into the bottom of the box and into the bottom of the pumpkin, and I'm going to pop that pumpkin back into the planter, and voila, we have something to keep our pumpkin held down into without using a bunch of icky glue. I don't think that that would be the best idea. You guys should try it and let me know how it goes. Now I'm using another floral stem and when I say floral stem it's just the stem of a floral and I'm popping the carvable pumpkin in and then I did hot glue the tiny pumpkin at the top. Now is the fun part that I absolutely love and I'm taking some Dollar Tree leaves and this little Dollar Tree pumpkin pick is gorgeous. You guys keep your eye out for it in your fall um, Dollar Tree. It's in the fall floral section. It's so pretty. I think it's going to sell out. It's just so gorgeous and the pumpkins are like this pretty copper color, but I'm just using Dollar Tree florals. I'm popping them into the base. There's no styrofoam here, but the leaves really kind of hold these in really tightly. This is going to go as a table centerpiece or next to my mantle, so I'm not really worried about the florals falling out, but if you were worried about that, you may want to invest in some floral foam um, instead of the Dollar Tree uh, gift box that I used for the base of this. I am, again, trying to use everything I have on hand and just have fun with it and use what I have in my stack. I have a lot of crafting supplies. I'm also using some of these pretty glittering fall picks because I do have gold in this project. So here it is. Oh my goodness. I think, I'm sorry. I think it's just as good as the $750 version. Okay. Maybe it's not as perfect. Maybe it's not as high end, but I'm really proud of this. I made it handmade. I think you guys can do this too on a budget. I really didn't know if we could pull this one off, but we're going to make more of these in different colors and styles, and I hope you guys try this and know that we can do this on a budget for much less than the hundreds of dollars, and I do have mad respect for the Mackenzie Childs painters and designers, completely, 100%. My budget just doesn't allow it, so I have to dupe these things. I have to share them with you guys. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take this Summer Vibes sign and transform it into a little bit more multi-seasonal purpose. So I removed the limes and let me tell you, I think this sign is absolutely adorable. I actually picked up two so I could use one for the summer and then one for this project. I'm also going to take some DAP pa patch and paint and I'm just going to patch the little holes that were at the top of this sign. Now this step is optional and they also sell the patch and paint at Dollar Tree in a smaller container. The next thing I want to do is take some of the Waverly White chalk paint and this is the last of my chalk paint you guys. I cannot find it at Walmart anywhere so please comment and help a girl out and let me know. Do you guys know if there's anywhere online where we can buy this Waverly White chalk paint? Anyway, drop a comment down below. I did use three coats 
parts of the chalk paint. And then I'm gonna share with you guys, you guys can do some lettering with some of the Dollar Tree poster board lettering, or I'm gonna share with you guys a really cute little Cricut design that I use for this project. I found this home sweet home side on the Cricut design space, and I'm just gonna go ahead and print it out on my Cricut. Again, you can use Dollar Tree lettering if you do not have a Cricut, no big deal at all. I used some transfer paper to create a transfer home sweet home, and then I'm just gonna apply it to the front of my little sign. Now, I'm a total Cricut beginner, so I'm using the pre-made templates. I even kind of struggle with those, so comment and let me know if you guys have any tips for me also on what are some great Cricut tutorials. I am doing my best to learn as I go. Now that I have my transfer applied, I am gonna save and reuse the little transfer tape. And then I'm gonna take this gold paint pen. Now I found this at Michael's and you can use your half off coupon, I believe it was $6. Dollar Tree also is carrying a gold paint pen though, but I do like the larger one just for some of these larger projects. Now I'm taking a ruler and I'm just gonna draw some little lines here. I wanna create a little check pattern at the top of my home sweet home sign. If you guys have been following me, you know that I have been crushing on Mackenzie Child's checkerboard. I think it's a fun, interesting take on the Buffalo check, which I know is gonna be super hot again this season, but I wanna give it my own little twist. So I kind of love the Mackenzie Child's checkerboard. Comment and let me know if you're a little obsessed with me right now as well. So I'm just going ahead and painting the little black squares. And this project was rather easy. This flat surfaces are really great to start with. Just a little tip, if you guys are afraid to try the checkerboard pattern, and um, let me tell you, start with a flat surface. That will really help it stay steady. And also, some of you all have been remarking um, to just use a Sharpie instead of the paintbrush, which is an awesome idea too. So now that I have my little black checks painted, I'm going in with a little bit of gold and white to kind of give it that hand-painted look, and just going in and around my checks. So this gold paint pen is called the Deco Color Premium Primo Pro pen, I guess. Somebody had asked me what it was. So hopefully that will help you if you decide you wanna try that. But again, I'm also using the gold paint pen from Dollar Tree. It actually works pretty well. It's just the tip of it isn't as wide as I need for some of these larger projects. So I'm going back in with just a little bit of gold and white detail work. That's something to be said is the more kind of little details you add to some of these projects, a little bit more high end it looks. And I also decided to go ahead Ahead and give it this glam gold handle. I really wanted this to be a neutral sign. I wanted it to go for multi seasons. So it can go for fall, Christmas, spring, um, pretty much any season with the black and white and a little bit of gold accent. And then I can even tie a bow on the handle. And think about this too. You guys can do any saying on the side, the front of the sign that you want to do. You don't have to do the home sweet home. You could do, you know, southern sweet sweet tea or welcome or any little happy fall y'all anything that you guys want to do so I popped it in to this little setting and oh my goodness I am so crushing on these pops of black and white and sunflowers and again black and white is so versatile you guys so think out. about that but I'm just going to chalk paint the entire thing and of course I guess I could use regular paint but for quick and easy paint jobs I have just gotten so addicted to chalk paint so I'm going to go ahead and give it two coats of the chalk paint and then I decided it needed a little bit of some French flair so I decided to go ahead and use my painter's tape and a sharpie and just draw out some stripes my idea is to create just a cute little kind of candle box or just any little tiny box that can sit on a tray and give it that kind of French Paris, French country feel. Um, and so I'm just gonna go ahead and draw more lines with my Sharpie. And then once I have that finished, I can add some black paint. You can use any acrylic black paint will work. And I did pretty good at drawing my lines. Again, I've just kind of now picked my paintbrush back up again. So I wanna encourage you all, if you are a little bit rusty at painting or you haven't painted it in a while, I'm actually taking 
taking a Skillshare class for 101 acrylics. And so hopefully I can share more of my painting skills with you all. Now I am going to go ahead and draw some squares. I decided to give it a little bit of a Mackenzie Childs feel on the lid. Again, I feel like the Mackenzie Childs checks are a really high-end boutique look that kind of gives that buffalo check flair that we're going to be seeing heading into fall, but gives it a little bit of a different look. And then I want to go in and add some dimension and highlight to my stripes with just a tiny touch of gold and white paint. Not very much, just enough to dab it on there and make it appear to be hand painted. the side of the box I decided to add some stripes and then I'm going in with my paint pen again this is that deco art paint pen that I found at Michaels I'm guessing they may carry it online I love the tip because it's a wider tip I've also been using the Dollar Tree little gold paint pen as well but the tip on it is super tiny so comment and let me know if you guys have seen one that Dollar Tree is carrying that has a wider tip I'm just not sure about that so here is my adorable little French country French farmhouse box I popped one of those flameless flickering candles in which if you guys have not tried those I'm gonna leave the link down below for those and for the adorable muffins so for the next Dollar Tree DIY we're gonna take some of those Dollar Tree sunflower plates that I shared with you guys in my last haul go check it out if you need some fun summer ideas for how to set a beautiful summer table and what Dollar Tree is carrying but I am going to take this piece of painters tape and run it down the center and then begin to use my sharpie marker to just draw out lines so you could do a fun stripe down this plate which I definitely played with the idea of just doing a stripe or you could go in a little bit further and do that Mackenzie Childs um, courtly check look so that's what I decided to go for it was a little bit tricky on the edges of the plate and you could probably skip that part which if I do more I probably will um, and just do the front part like right here where I'm showing you guys so you're just gonna take your painters tape and mark out those squares this is super easy and then you're gonna go in with some black paint now I did find black glass paint at Michaels so it's great for painting on glass I've also used acrylic paint which works great as well and I believe that glass paint is also acrylic paint it's just more for glass and it's very price friendly I think it was two dollars for a bottle but again I use acrylic paint all the time I just happened to find this at Michaels and Michaels was actually out of so many of their paints comment and let me know if you guys are seeing that in your stores where they're out of so many different crafting supplies I'm guessing it's because everybody is at home crafting right now so now that I have my black checkered squares I'm going in and I'm adding in just some touches of white and just begin to kind of touch some of those little edges up and then also filling in with a smaller brush um, the rest of those black parts so this is gold paint it's just in the color gold by Arteza craft company and it's what I use to drag the gold in so if you studied the McKinsey Child's checks the courtly check always has a little bit of whites and golds dragged into their checks and so by to do that you're just going to take your brush and you're going to dab one side of the brush with a bit of gold and the other side with a little bit of white or black whichever square that you're coloring in that's what I have found so far to kind of give it that look now I am still learning and in fact I am taking some of those beginner acrylic classes and the on Skillshare which is super exciting you guys are gonna definitely have to try some of those but it's such a lesson in patience and I guess I'm just so excited to learn this new skill with the acrylic painting I have painted with oils before but I've never tried my hand really at acrylics so I thought this was super fun and fabulous and it's very forgiving as well so I also picked up this deco color premium uh, pro pen at Michaels and it's just a gold leafing metallic pen that's giving me a little bit more control over doing that gold edging so Mackenzie Childs actually does a gold edging on their plate so I love that So here is how everything is going to look. I'm adding this beautiful charger that I also hand painted 
and I'm going to add in the Dollar Tree sunflower dish. Now, my inspiration came from this high-end decor store that was selling sunflower, sunflower plates that had this black background, and they were $25 a plate, and we customized and made our own for only a dollar plus your paint supplies. Here's also that little Dollar Tree. This is more of a dish towel, but I popped a napkin ring that I DIY'd, and then if you tuck the ends under, you have a really beautiful napkin place setting. Very nice for display and great for your guests to wipe their hands on. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm taking these Dollar Tree garden planters and they were originally a different color. I painted them white just with some spray paint and now I'm taking some Mod Podge and this Mackenzie Childs napkin. So the napkins are on MackenzieChilds.com and they're about $6.95 for a pack of these cocktail napkins, which is what I use um, in my projects um, for this project. And I'm just taking the, I'm using the waterproof Mod Podge. Now I am going to leave these outside so the waterproof mod podge really helps otherwise you don't want to leave your items that you've mod podged um, outside so I just added a nice good layer of mod podge and then I'm gonna peel off the white part of the napkin and then I'm going to add the napkin to the front of the planter now if you wanted to get really technical you could cut all these um, flowers out and really make it perfect and pretty but I'm just gonna pop these outside on my front garden table and so I'm just going to go for it and have fun and just add some layers of beautiful napkins. I loved the one that I did for inside my house. And so I've been racking my brain how to kind of duplicate this on something for the outside. And so this was the perfect solution. And I did add a layer of Mod Podge on top of the napkin and then I'm just trimming it off and then also taking in and around the edge of it and adding another layer of Mod Podge. And that's going to pull that napkin kind of over. And so once I have that finished off, I I can just go ahead and take another napkin and add another napkin in. So again, same technique. You just add Mod Podge all over your um, little project. And I was going a little bit quickly and so the napkin did get stuck while I was Mod Podging, but it would be nice if you have the extra time to kind of let everything dry in between coats. But I'm going for it and just getting this done. And so adding lots of layer of Mod Podge on the bottom part of the planter and then over the top part and voila, you have an ultra fabulous $1, except for the napkins, McKinsey Tells Inspired Planter. And if you guys have seen their website, their stuff is so gorgeous because it's hand painted and props to all the artists out there that do their work. Um, but I really love that we can dupe these in our own uh, budget. So definitely having fun with this and duping some of these, as well as I do own a couple of their pieces that were a gift to me um, by my wonderful husband, Mr. Romantic, aka, um, and his real name is Josh. So there we have it. And then I wanted to show you guys too, this little black one. So the black one's really pretty. It was a little bit bold. Usually I do a lot of pastels and more kind of shabby chic French farmhouse vibe, but I love this black. And several of you guys have commented and let me know actually that you um, had ordered the black and you can see I was starting a different DIY with these. I was going to actually paint them, hand paint them and realize that that was going to be very time consuming and tedious. So I went for the Mod Podge technique. Now the next part of this DIY, I'm going to create a floral. So I'm just hot gluing some floral foam on to the base of this. And that way I can create a pretty little arrangement. So on the table that I have outside, it gets so much sun that it's really difficult to keep plants alive. So I wanted to go for something that was fake. <laughs> so I'm just using this pile of flowers. They're from the thrift store, garage sales, the craft store, and a mix of Dollar Tree. So just grab whatever you have on hand to create a really fun little summer bouquet. I'm using daisies and roses and tulips and then some little purple flowers um, that I had, again, just popping them in kind of randomly, but with the same color scheme that's in with uh, the project that I'm working on.
Now I'm just adding a little bit of faux green moss um, that you pick up at Dollar Tree or pretty much any craft store and that's going to kind of fill it in and give it that fun little summer garden vibe. And I am so crushing on this little creation. These are so fun and inexpensive and they just go along perfectly with what I'm doing out on my front porch. So I'm just mixing them. Super adorable sunflowers on the McKenzie Childs website for $15 each and I knew we could duplicate them using Dollar Tree sunflowers. So I'm taking these Dollar Tree sunflowers and they actually come five to a bundle and then this ribbon that I found off Amazon and I'm just going to cut it about the length that I would want to make my petal and then I'm going to trim off the wired part and then I'm going to begin to cut the ribbon in strips and then once you have it cut in strips you just want to take your scissors and round the ends. Now I also like to leave my ribbon just a little bit long and that way I have the option of trimming it down just a little bit instead of them uh, the petals being too short. So once you have your petals ready Ready to assemble you can go ahead and add a tiny drop of hot glue to the ends of the petals and then just nestle them down into your sunflower now this is a little bit tedious I will say because it's very easy to burn the tips of your fingers so use the little Dollar Tree finger protectors if you have them or just be extra careful now my fingertips are pretty tough so um, it doesn't actually really hurt that much if I do get a dab of hot glue on them but I just wanted to leave you guys a little note so continue to to hot glue and add your super cute little petals here and also remember you can customize this to suit your fancy whatever kind of decor style you are going for I also decided to glam these up and I'm using these beautiful jewels you get them on totallydazzle.com I'll leave you guys the link down below they're like a dollar fifty each at the most which is a super great deal they look super vintage and then if you don't have these jewels you guys could always use a piece of grandma's broken jewelry or maybe an old earring but just hot glue that to the center and you have the most fabulous custom sunflower this is something that you would see at a boutique and then you guys can put a brooch on the back of them you can um, go ahead and add that floral stem back onto it which is what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna use it in this super beautiful over-the-top flower arrangement that I'm gonna share with you guys so here is how my two came out and then I'm gonna share with you guys how to do this Dollar Tree floral arrangement and yes this this is all Dollar Tree supplies, minus the tiny little green tendrils that are hanging down from it. Cannot wait to share this with you guys. Oh my Dollar goodness. Tree DIY. So We're going to take a Dollar Tree margarita glass, flip it upside down, use some E6000 glue along the edge and a little bit of hot glue. And then one of those Dollar Tree vases, you're going to let that dry for about 24 hours and then you can chalk paint it white or you can also spray paint it white and that is going to give you this really cool vase so I did add about two to three coats and you want to let each coat dry in between I love the Waverly white chalk paint but it has been sold out everywhere in my store so I was just using this kilns paint um, but again spray painting it would work as well then you want to pop some of your Dollar Tree foam in and then you can create your arrangement. Now, for this vase though, I wanted to go ahead and take and use that painter's tape and create and make a beautiful Mackenzie Child's vase. I have had my eye on one that's on their website and it's over a hundred dollars, you guys. It's just not in my budget and I knew I could try to DIY my, one myself. So I'm taking the painter's tape and I ran it down and made stripes with my Sharpie marker and then I'm going around it to make that checkerboard pattern. Now I did make a little bit of a mistake because because I ended up with an extra check and somehow I don't know the pattern got a little bit off but because it was a vase and not a flat plate I feel like I was able to make it work I also am taking the painters tape and I'm creating a design down the base of the margarita glass or our new vase as you guys would have it and I'm just using my sharpie again it the sharpie really helps for you guys to be able to kind of know where your lines are to paint in between them so I'm using this it's called a pathano blue and I'm gonna take that blue and it's the, with the Arteza craft paint but it's actually probably a lighter blue the Mackenzie Child's blue is more of a navy dark blue but this is what I had on hand and I always encourage you all to try to use what you already have in your home before you run out and buy new supplies um, but I'm just taking my paintbrush and I'm painting the checks and be careful because it's really easy to skip a pattern so you kind of just want to work in a line or even mark out where you're supposed to paint <laughs> I get a little um, I don't know I just 
lose my train of thought sometimes. My kids are running around and I end up talking to someone and I'll jump the pattern, but have some grace with yourself. All you have to do is use a little bit of white paint to drop back in and clean that up. And also remember with the Mackenzie Child's um, checks, they're all hand painted. And so you can actually see the artist's lines in there and see where it's not perfect. So this is such a great pattern to use as a beginner pattern to give yourself grace with. So always give yourself grace. You can always use white to go back over whatever you need to go back over. So here I am just continuing on with the blue checks. And so I lay down a layer of blue and then I go in and I overlay a layer of white on top of that with a little bit of blue mixed into it to kind of lighten things up. Now I'm taking my brush and dragging it with white and blue together to create this lighter blue check. Again, the Mackenzie Child's um, pattern is a little bit more of a royal blue and mine's coming out, I feel like with a little bit more of um, an aqua blue undertone and I might just be seeing that um, with my eye. I think everybody's eye sees colors a little bit differently. So anyway, here's a close up of how I'm creating this pattern. So you can see I take my brush, it's got white and blue um, kind of on each side of the brush and then I take and I drag it and then I flip the brush to the other side and that's gonna give you that color on the other side and it's gonna give you that really pretty kind of hand painted look look. Now this vase was very tricky for me to keep my hands steady and I did have to go back in and straighten up my lines and they weren't perfect. It was difficult for me because I can be a bit of a perfectionist. So this is going to take a lot more practice than doing the plate. So note to self, this is probably more of an advanced project I'm guessing, um, but I'm still a beginner. So just maybe more advanced and patient. So here is the finished product. I did add some of those kind of little gold flecks and I did take my paintbrush and kind of edge the um, under part of the vase with some gold. Comment and let me know what you all think. I think it turned out absolutely gorgeous. It is definitely a labor of love and it was just what I was going for to have that kind of late summer. Now I wanna share with you all how to do a beautiful sunflower and bloom floral arrangement. So I'm starting out out with the Dollar Tree wheat grass, and I'm going to put that into the center of the arrangement. And I'm going to share with you all how to create this vase a little bit later in this video, so definitely stay with me. I'm also adding in some of the Dollar Tree, they're a cream colored hydrangea, and then the Dollar Tree sunflowers. And I have cut all of the stems of the fake florals off at the base of the stem. And you're just going to continue to add in your flowers, and then I also decided to fill it out a little bit more. And add more wheatgrass in the center. I really want the center part to have height and dimension. And then I'm going in with some of these little smaller little Dollar Tree florals. So the palette on this is going to feel like a summer in bloom. I want to keep the whites and the greens in here because it is still summer, but these sunflowers and these pretty little wheatgrass stems are going to give you the feel of almost an early fall without it being fall. So it's a great transition from your 4th of July red white and blue to pull the red and blue out of your arrangement and add in the sunflowers and just kind of these pops of the Gerbera daisies and um, the wheatgrass again it's hinting at that late summer harvest or just full bloom summer so I'm using the blue check vase that I created I'm going to share with you guys how to create this it's all Dollar Tree believe it or not you guys are going to go crazy for this and it's such a surprise and this is such a budget so for each floral that I'm adding I used two bundles of flowers. So two bundles of sunflowers, two bundles of hydrangeas, one bundle of roses, and then two bundles of the wheatgrass, and then these little tiny, I believe they're like little tiny mums. I'm not completely for sure. Here is how it looks so far. And again, you're just going to kind of add your florals in. I want it to be kind of wild and summery, how everything blooms and is beautiful and bright and colorful. So just continue to add those florals and play around with them to your fancy. See. 
Now here is how your arrangement is going to look once you are all finished. And if you can see, I added two of those pretty bling sunflowers into the center of the arrangement. I also popped in a couple of apples again, cause we're feeling that harvest in the summertime and I think it looks fabulous. Now the only thing that wasn't Dollar Tree is I added these tiny little lime green stems of florals that I picked up at the thrift store, but these sunflowers Oh my goodness, they add that boutique pop of surprise, something that you would see from a high-end florist. It's going to just add that beauty and that glam is so perfect. You guys know I love that glam. For the first Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take some of these Dollar Tree metal flowers and the first thing I want to do is just very gently bend them apart. I want to go ahead and spray paint them white with my Rust-Oleum matte white spray paint and I want to get between between all of the petals. The other thing I want to do is cover them with a plastic bag so I don't get any white spray paint on the petals. My idea for these is to create a really beautiful Mackenzie Child inspired floral um, metal flower. So I want to start out with this base of white spray paint. I ended up only needing one coat, but I did spray the front and the back really well. The next step is I'm going to take some of this parchment paper or wax paper and I want to trace out one of the petals and this is a great a little tip. So you just take your parchment paper and you lay it on top of whatever you're going to be decoupaging on top of and just trace it out. And then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut a petal. So this project I have had in my head to do and it was so fun to bring it to life. So I'm taking these beautiful floral Mackenzie Childs napkins. You can find them on the Mackenzie Childs website. I'm so in love with their beautiful work, but the prices are a little bit much for me. So I'm just taking my template with a wax paper and I'm tracing out all of the petals that I'm going to need for this project. Then I'm going to go ahead and cut the petals out. Now I don't pull apart the white backing of the napkin until I'm done um, cutting them and tracing them out. I hope that makes sense. So there's several layers of a napkin and for these you'll want to go ahead and pull apart until you get to the smallest layer. I'm also using some of this dishwasher safe Mod Podge but really any Mod Podge will do if you're going to leave these inside of your home. They are metal flowers and they were out in my garden so I had originally wanted to put them back out of my garden but after all of the work that it took to do this I may end up leaving them inside. So I'm adding a layer of Mod Podge and then I'm adding my petal on and be careful because it's kind of a little bit difficult with as tedious as this is, but it is so well worth it in the end. And once you have your little petal all the way positioned, you can just take a nice layer of Mod Podge and run that over that. And then you can see I'm kind of tipping the end of the floral petal. And so here we go. It is basically just gluing these pretty pieces of napkin on here. And there was really no rhyme or reason. I tried to kind of space the hot pink, the darker color out every other petal with some of the lighter colors, but I wanted this to be really whimsical and really fun and creative and just look like this patchwork bloom of design, which I've been studying the Mackenzie Child's um, designs and they're so whimsical and beautiful and check out how this came out. Oh my goodness. I am over the moon in heaven with this project. So it did take about an hour front to back to do this project. So it's going to take me a couple of more hours to do more of these, but well worth it. So the next Dollar Tree did. DIY, I found this rug on McKenzie Child's website and it was 200 and something dollars. I took this Dollar Tree rug and I used some white paint because originally they're gray and you do have to use a generous layer of white paint. And I painted it white and I let it dry for about two days. <laughs> 
And then I'm going to take this ruler and I'm just going to begin to trace out an edging with the ruler. Now I'm not going to get as detailed as the rug to ice on the website because this takes a lot of time, patience, and um, paint actually. So I'm going to go ahead and take and I'm going to just add lines. I decided to do stripes on the outside of the rug. So I'm just taking the marker and this is just a sharpie and I'm marking out stripes. And once I had that done, here is how that's going to look. And now I'm going to take my ruler and I want to create more of like a diamond or a harlequin pattern so I'm just making lines in a diagonal motion now this may not be exactly how you're supposed to do it but this is how I went about it for my sanity and how I felt like would be the easiest to show you guys how to do it so I'm just tracing in um, this kind of sideways direction to create the little diamonds and then I'm gonna go in with some of my blue paint and I had a lot of blue paint so I originally thought I was gonna do black paint but I had been running low and so I went in with the blue paint because I knew this was gonna take quite a bit of paint. And I just decided to go ahead and start coloring in the blue and I was going to skip but then I decided to go completely down a line. It's kind of a little bit trial and error sometimes with me but I did skip on the upper diamond um, pattern and then just do um, blue in one line and then white in one line and then blue in one line. I hope that makes sense but you guys will see more as I progress throughout this. Originally I thought I was going to skip one of the white ones but then that didn't make sense. <laughs> And for me, my brain is super creative, but I don't really see um, the shapes very well sometimes. So sometimes it takes me a minute to catch onto the pattern and to know what to use. But here's how it's turning out. And I also used a dab of white in there. So I'm adding in blue and then giving a little bit of overlay of white to um, give it some dimension. and. Um, to lighten that blue up just a little bit because I want it to feel a little bit more fresh for summer and not have as much darkness but also add in the touches of white so it would match um, my vase and my plates that I have painted. Now I'm just painting the stripes on the outside of my rug and again I'm laying down a layer of the blue paint and then just adding in some white paint. This is a bit time consuming and it does take a bit of paint but if you have that on hand you can create this really beautiful mat for next to nothing. Also I am going to go back in and seal it with an acrylic sealer spray. I also added a little gold rimming but check this out. I think this is now, much for the next more DIY I found another Mackenzie Childs. Um, inspiration piece. It was a candle. So I'm taking this candle. It's an LED candle that I found at the thrift store and I'm just going to go ahead and add some Mod Podge to the outside of the candle. I printed off a checkerboard pattern. I just went to the internet. I googled checkerboard pattern. I printed it off and I'm going to add it to the outside of this candle. Now Dollar Tree does have LED candles if you happen to snag any of those or you can just use a regular candle with Ever you all have on hand. You could also even use a jar, um, but I'm just going over this with a layer of Mod Podge on the underneath and then on top of it. To finish this candle project off, I went ahead and printed out another sheet of the checkerboard pattern and then I'm just Mod Podging the rest of it on there. I will tell you that I just used a regular printer and regular printer paper. Um, you guys just go for it, use what you have, have fun. And I did apply again a generous layer of Mod Podge over this because I do want it to be somewhat long lasting. I love the pops of black and white. I think this can really transition into any season. It can go summer with lemons, it can go into fall for Halloween, and it can even go for Christmas. So have fun with it and get creative. 
Now for the next DIY, I'm taking this thrift store candlestick and I'm adding this little Dollar Tree scrolly frame to the top of this. And I'm deciding that I want to have like a kind of a fancy stand for my candle. I'm using what I have on hand and I'm just adding some Dollar Tree floral foam to the top. I decided that I wanted to create a springish summer greenery piece. So I'm just clipping off some greenery pieces. Again, this is greenery that I had on hand. These are Dollar Tree hydrangeas and then just some nice spring greenery. I believe I found it at Michael's or maybe Walmart, um, but I'm clipping them off fairly short because I want the greenery piece to kind of spill over but not be too long. Now how fun and fabulous is this looking? Oh my goodness, I had so much fun creating this. So I'm just adding in some more little bits of greenery. I love the pops of lime against the black and white. I really feel like this is my new color, at least for this week right now. You guys know I love to share with you all so many different types of decor looks. And I've always thought Mackenzie Childs was just super fun and different and creative. And so I thought, well, let's do some inspired pieces. I did end up going ahead and adding a little bow over here to the side. This was some ribbon with stripes and then just kind of some Paris inspired ribbon along with some burlap. It's that mesh burlap. Um, I found that at burlapfabric.com but I just dug into my stash for this one and of course I'm dovetailing my ends and adding a little tail here. Here is how it came out. How fun and oh my goodness I really feel like this looks very high-end and boutique gorgeous on a teeny tiny budget. For the next DIY, I'm gonna take these little Dollar Tree garden planters, and these are just two little clay pots that I had painted white. It was from another DIY, but I'm repurposing it and reusing it. I'm using the painter's tape again because I wanna create some stripes down these pots. Um, I've seen some really neat black and white pots, and I'm gonna do a mini version. I do wanna do some larger ones, but I wanted to try my hand at how this was gonna work. So I went ahead and used some black craft paint and used that to create these stripes. I decided to add some gold paint after I painted my stripes. I also painted the top part of my little planter with a black rim. Again, I'm going for more of a high-end kind of boutique look, kind of Mackenzie Childs inspired. Um, so here it is without the gold, and then you guys saw it with the gold. I ended up keeping it with the gold. I just found that to be a little bit more glam and fabulous, um, but this could go either way, and you could even incorporate this into kind of some um, more chic modern farmhouse look. I added in some greenery, just some little lamb's ear that I found at Walmart and then some other greenery. I thought it looked really great in this little two-tier scalloped edge tray. Again, I found that at Target Dollar Spot. So for the next DIY, I want to create a beautiful vase. Now this Mackenzie Childs inspired vase was originally a hundred dollars. I have this Dollar Tree vase that I had originally painted white for this session of DIYs and then I changed my mind at the last minute and decided to print out some more of that checkerboard pattern. I'm adding Mod Podge to the back of the checkerboard and then I'm just going to lay that on top of my vase. This was going to be a lot easier. My original plan was to paint this white and then hand paint the checkerboard pattern, but after how long it took for me to do the cup, I decided that maybe it would be a quicker and easier idea for me to just go ahead and Mod Podge this together. 
So depending upon how much time you had, you could either hand paint the checkerboards or you could cheat like me and go ahead and Mod Podge them to the vase. Now this is a Dollar Tree vase and I just printed out some checkerboard pattern and I'm Mod Podging it to this little vase. So we had the $100 vase, which is amazing and I completely respect the artist and the artistry, but we're doing a dupe on this and so I thought it would just be fun to share with you guys if you cannot afford the $100 vase or you just want to play around and create something and see if you want to incorporate some black and white into your decor like me. I don't usually do a whole lot of black and white, but for some reason I'm just really crushing on this look right now. So I was able to get one whole section done and then I did print out another section of the black and white checkerboard and then needed to add that again with the Mod Podge and then a heavy layer of glue over that. So I went ahead and just popped some white Dollar Tree flowers into this vase and here is how it has all come together. I love this little gratitude is the best attitude. I found that last year at Dollar Tree, but it is such a wonderful reminder for me just to be grateful for every moment and every day. As I found this Mackenzie Child's Play on the Neiman Marcus website for $68 and I knew we could duplicate it using Dollar Tree supplies. So I'm taking this white plate and I'm running a piece of painter's tape down the center and then with my Sharpie marker I want to trace out that line and then I want to make another line right next to it and you can just use your piece of painter's tape as your guide. So I will tell you that the only only hard part about this is where the plate kind of curves. So that may be the only tricky spot for you, but this doesn't have to be perfect because Mackenzie Child's creations are not perfect. They're hand painted by some really amazing artists and I completely respect their art, but their items are a little bit out of my price range and to do this on a budget, I thought we could do it ourselves. So once you have stripes down one side, you can begin the same process on the other side. You're just gonna run your tape down the center to begin your first line. And you can even see I got a little wobbly bobbly and continue to do that until you get to the edge of your plate. You use your piece of painter's tape as your guide and just use your Sharpie and that's going to give you a great outline. Now I'm taking some of this blue Arteza craft paint and really you can use any blue acrylic paint and I started out with just the straight blue. Now you could mix in some white or some other colored blues, but I wanted to have a really good base and I knew I was gonna have to do two coats. So I'm just using this paintbrush from Walmart. They also have paintbrushes from Dollar Tree, which I picked up yesterday, and I'm gonna try those out over the weekend and let you all know how they are, but you're just gonna paint squares onto your plate with your base color. This is how I did it. and so so I'm just continuing to go every other square and then once you'd move to the second line of course you're going to do every other square and you want to skip a white square now the pattern is super easy but I did find it challenging I did several of these and sometimes I would jump the pattern um, but anyway just keep trying and if you all mess up you can always go back over your imperfection with some white paint and again this is a hand painted item so relax take a deep breath I find this paint to be very relaxing even if it's a little bit tedious.
now that I have my base color done, I'm going to go in with some of this white acrylic paint and I take my brush and dab a little bit of white and a little bit of blue together and then just kind of drag it along the square. And you can even tilt your brush to the other side as you do the square to kind of give it a different color option. But basically you're just going over it with a little bit of white and blue kind of mixed in. Again, you want this to appear to be hand painted. So I'm not completely covering it with just one color. I really want to have that hand-painted Mackenzie Childs look and I want all the squares to look very similar and symmetrical but a little bit different and a little bit uh, unique um, that's what gives it its beautiful flair so again you're just taking that brush and dipping it in with a little bit of white paint and a little bit of blue and you want it to appear in my opinion um, a, not streaky but a little bit streaky I guess I don't know just have fun with it you'll get the hang of it um, this was my second plate that I did and so as I move on and do more projects it seems like I'm getting um, a little bit better as I go so again give yourself some grace have fun and the only tricky parts I did find were the curves in the plate so wherever the plate curved um, it was a little bit trickier but having this nice flat smooth brush was super great super helpful and then you can even switch to a smaller brush once you get to those edges if you want it to be a little bit more perfect Once my plate was dry, I'm taking this Dollar Tree gold metallic marker. I also have some gold paint from Arteza that I really love to use. Either one is great, um, but you'll want to make a little rim around your plate with um, either some gold paint or a gold marker. And of course, this step is optional. And I even added a tiny bit of gold to some of the square spaces. So here it is. I ended up doing three of these and then a charger. And I'm going to share with you guys how to do a charger in um, one of next week's videos but I am so crushing on this I love the royal check that they're showing right now for the 4th of July holiday and it's just a twist on that black and white and the blues are just giving me so many vibes a comment for the next Dollar Tree DIY I'm taking this Dollar Tree garden gate now this was just a dollar garden gate that I had painted white and I want to make it into a Mackenzie Childs inspired um, garden decor piece so so I'm taking this piece of blue tape and I'm just going to run it down the center. My idea is to paint some stripes on this. So once I have the first piece of tape, that's where I'm going to then add a second piece of tape, just measuring it to give it kind of a striped effect. You're going to continue to do this until you have several pieces of tape in this striped fashion. And then once I have the tape added, I'm just going in with some black acrylic paint and I'm going to begin to paint my stripe details. Also, I wanted to note that I use two coats, maybe even three of the black paint to make sure it has really nice, good coverage. Now I'm going in with some gold acrylic paint. Now these paints are from Arteza. It's a craft company online and they're really nice quality acrylic paints, but really you could use any that you love or that you have on hand. And now I'm going to go ahead and peel the little paint um, tape stickers off. And then I decided just to use a Sharpie to um, mark out these little detailed spots because they were a little bit more intricate. And so I'm just using that piece of tape to measure it and I decided to continue on with the stripe pattern. I thought about doing polka dots but the width of the little garden fence really wasn't wide enough to do a really 
good polka dot and to be honest with you my hand isn't super steady so these kind of projects are actually a little bit of a challenge for me but they're also really relaxing I don't know if that's crazy or not I don't know comment and let me know if you guys kind of like to sit down and do a really detailed project and find it a little bit relaxing even if it's not perfect so give yourself grace and give me some grace on this as well but just continue to add some pretty stripes and if you don't want to do black and white and you want to do pink and white or purple or any color that sits your design and your fancy go for it this is what I'm into right now because I did add black and white couch cushions to my outdoor um, front port and so I wanted to mix in and also be versatile for fall and Christmas I'm always thinking about that next season or holiday that's coming up and I want it to last um, throughout the season The next step to giving it that Mackenzie Child's inspired flair is to add some gold brushed paint. So you just take a little bit of gold paint and brush that in to the white spots. And it's a little bit hard to see, but it really does give it um, that really pretty kind of vintage um, Mackenzie Child's French farmhouse, um, just a flare. So now I'm taking some Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going to antique it as well. Again, I really want to give it um, just that aged appearance and make it look like it was more of a vintage hand painted piece. It's also going to help seal it. And I did end up using this outside. And so I also sealed this with the poly acrylic that way it stays a little bit nicer for a little bit longer so check this out so I popped it in to my little flower garden just back in the back I did have to trim off one of the little prongs but I think that this is super adorable and I can change it out when so fall. for the next Dollar Tree DIY I'm taking one of those Dollar Tree butterfly stickers and I'm gonna spray paint it with the ultra matte spray paint again and I ended up spray painting three of these and then I'm just going to trace along the napkin that I want to decoupage to the front of the butterfly. Mackenzie Childs has beautiful butterflies on their website and I knew that we could make these using Dollar Tree supplies and some of their napkins. So the other thing is a lot of you all have asked why do I paint everything white first before I decoupage. If you leave the original color on there, your napkin won't show through as strongly with the color. So that other color will bleed through. So the butterflies were like red and hot pink. And so it showed through a little bit too much. And I wanted more of that checkerboard to show through. So I'm just cutting my napkin out. And then you're going to want it to remove the extra white layer before you begin your Mod Podge. And then once you have that extra layer removed, you can just take some of your Mod Podge. And I'm using the waterproof Mod Podge. I found it at Michael's. Um, you can probably order it online as well. But for these outdoor projects, I think it's a better option. Of course, you could always use the little butterfly indoors as well. Um, and I did seal it also with poly acrylic. So I'm just adding a generous layer of Mod Podge and then I'm popping my little napkin on top of there. And then I also always add another layer as well and you can remove it and reapply it but you have to do it quickly otherwise I've had many a napkin tear so comment and let me know if you guys have any tips for me on this process and I hope you guys are loving this as well I also ended up adding a little bit of gold tips around these butterflies just to make them that more fun and fabulous and of course we do need a floral butterfly right guys so I'm doing one in flowers as well
So I just popped these butterflies into my fern. That um, garden floral uh, that we did in the last DIY video, you guys absolutely loved it. So I thought it'd be cute to add these little butterflies just gently resting on my fern. And as always, I ask that you all comment and let me know what was your favorite DIY in this video. I love to hear your feedback and what you all love, so I know to do more of those. And also, don't forget to subscribe and comment because I have so many uh, giveaways planned, and I will be announcing the purse giveaway winner on the next upcoming video, and that's going to be on Thursday, so you guys stay tuned. Don't forget to comment and subscribe, and thank you all for being here. It means so much.
next Dollar Tree DIY. We're going to go full on fall with this one. I'm going to take one of those little Dollar Tree fall pumpkins and this gold Dollar Tree marker. You get this in the crafters square section. And I'm just going to draw lines down where the pumpkin um, it just already naturally has lines. So you're just going to do that around the entire pumpkin. I decided to make checks on this pumpkin. You could always just make stripes if you wanted to. So I'm gonna take my gold pen and I'm just going to draw a line all the way around the pumpkin. And I did draw two more lines around the pumpkin. I had made when you saw me looking, I made another one. I was just checking to see how many lines I had drawn around it. And really it's up to you how many lines you wanna draw around it. Now this is a little bit tedious because the pumpkin is has the ridges um, so give yourself a little bit of grace but it's kind of fun to, to do something hand painted now I'm using one of the little Dollar Tree paint brushes and I'm using one of the smaller ones and then I'm using the white Waverly chalk paint to go in and begin to paint my squares and I liked using the chalk paint over the Dollar Tree acrylic paint because I find that their acrylic paint is a little bit um, too thin when you're painting on top of something dark it's not bad for some projects but I would have to do a lot of layers on this one and I really didn't want to paint that many layers when there's a lot of like little detail work to do this was already a little bit of a project so just a little note there to use a little bit nicer of a paint if you have that or if you just have the extra time that's totally fine too so you're just going every other one to make the checks now if you're gonna do buffalo check you could always add in another color I'm going just for the brown and white check on this one I'm kind of doing like a little bit of a spin on Mackenzie Child except for we're not doing the black and white for this we're doing the brown and white so I thought that would be fun I know not everybody does um, black and white and I wanted to show you guys just a little bit of a different idea so you can think about a different color with the checks but I think this is so fun and fabulous and just a different way to decorate for fall it's always nice to throw that little handmade piece in and um, it just gives it some flair and some fun and some whimsy so just continue to paint your checks give yourself grace and and have fun with it. The other thing I wanted to let you all know that I did do that I didn't show in this DIY was I went back over the checks with my gold paint pen and you'll see that right here you can see I kind of outlined it with the gold paint pen that's kind of an optional step if you guys wanted to do that now I used a gold paint pen that I found at Michaels you can always use the Dollar Tree gold paint pen as well or you can just skip that step it's totally up to you but check it out you guys I think this looks so high-end for only a couple of dollars you know for the paint and the little pumpkin you have something very high end it's just eye-catching and fun and it's a good way to tie in those other so for the next things. Dollar Tree DIY I found a stash of Dollar Tree sunflower dishes that I had from last season I actually rebought four more so I buy four um, to use just as dinnerware to eat off of and then I have some for decoration now don't eat off the dishes that you've painted upon but I'm gonna go ahead and paint stripes with my Sharpie marker and I use the piece of tape to edge it out this is a lot trickier than a plate so if you're a beginner with the stripes and the checks you may want to start with a plate which I found to be a lot less intensive but I'm going to go ahead and use some of this deco art paint and you can use any acrylic paint this is really all they had at Michaels and it just happened to be glass paint so I was like well I'll give it a try and I actually feel like I kind of like acrylic paint better I've used both also, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my paintbrush to paint stripes on this. I wanted to share with you guys a different look um, other than the check. So if you're not digging the check, or you a little bit um, hard to do with checks, you could always just do a stripe. Mm -hmm. 
Now, once I get closer to having my checks done, I'm going in with this really fine little paintbrush. I found this pack of paintbrushes at Dollar Tree and their paintbrushes work pretty good. Now, I'm not a fine artist, <laughs> so if you are, you may be disappointed, but I felt like the quality was pretty good, you guys, so don't be afraid of the Crafters Square paintbrushes. Now, the little sunflowers going around them was a little bit tedious, but I kind of just took my paintbrush and swirled it along there. This project did not turn out perfect, but give yourself some grace if you're trying these projects and just keep going. I feel like a lot of you all have encouraged me, so I'm going to encourage you that you'll get better as you keep going. And I think it fits perfectly and oh so adorable into my transitional season decor. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you how I'm going to paint one of my little sunflower bowls in a check pattern. So in my last DIY video, which I'll link down below for you all, I shared with you guys how to paint the sunflower plates in a check pattern. Now we're going to go for a bowl. And I decided not to use the tape to trim this out. So it left me with an extra check, which might be a mistake, but it was so much easier and I was able to get better lines. I felt, I don't know, bowls are really Really, really tricky. I'm going to try to attempt a cup soon and see how that goes. So once I have all my straight lines drawn, I'm just going to draw a line around the bowl to create my little checkerboard pattern. And once I have that accomplished, and I even thought it might be cute just to leave the stripes. You could go back over them and make them super cute. Um, but I did decide to go ahead and do the check. So I'm using my black paint and my paintbrush, and I'm just going to color in my little checks. Now, if you all have trouble painting. I have had some of you tell me that you're just using a black Sharpie to Sharpie in your checks, which that is totally fine as well. I really feel like everybody's step and journey is a little bit different. And so just do whatever works for you. You could also use a napkin and decoupage some of those pretty check napkins in and around the little sunflower dishes as well, which I have shared those DIYs with you guys too. I'm hoping you all are having fun watching me paint. Comment and let me know. Also, if you signed up for Skillshare, what class are you guys going to be taking? I also just took one of their floral design classes. I've never had any formal, formal training in florals, so that was a really fun thing to learn. Now here's the two different paint pens. One is from the Crafters Square from Dollar Tree, and the other one is that Primo Prime Pro. I'm using the Prime Pro around the top, so I'm just going to do a gold edging around the top of my bowl. The Mackenzie Childs actually uses a gold paint in their designs that has 24 karat gold in it from what I listened to when I was um, listening to the history of their designs and it come, it starts out red and then once they fire it it turns to that gold color but we're using fake gold here remember we're on a budget <laughs> but I think it turned out really cute and you can always use a little bit of fingernail polish remover if you get your paint in the wrong spot that's another little tip or trick that I have for you and so the actual cup you'll have also asked me about that cup is a real Mackenzie Childs cup so I think I'm doing pretty good trying to replicate their high-end designs on a teeny tiny budget. As always, comment and let me know what was your favorite DIY in this video and which one will you be recreating? I love to hear what you all are inspired to do. And don't forget to customize this to suit the color of your decor. So maybe you're not doing sunflowers, um, but you're doing lemons, you could do yellow checks, or maybe you're doing French country, you could do brown checks. Maybe you're doing shabby chic girly, you could do pink checks. Customize this to suit your decor style. You don't have to do um, exactly what I'm doing, even though if you're inspired, definitely go for it. I love to see also all of the posts you all are making on my Ladies Romantic Home Facebook group page. You all are so inspiring. I feel like it's just this big creative um, family that we have and everybody is sharing. DIY. I'm going to create a really beautiful over the top bow. So I'm going to use my easy bow maker here and I will link a huge bow video down below for you guys in case you don't have a bow maker. I also make a bow without the easy bow maker but you're just going to pop your piece of wire um, down here I used a pipe cleaner and then I'm measuring it out five inches for my tail and I have tried this easy bow maker several times now and I absolutely love it you guys um, you can buy them pretty much anywhere just google easy bow maker I know deco exchange sells them as well as Amazon so I'm just taking and I'm making the ribbon five inches on each side what I love about it it's 
that has the little measurements already on there. So it makes it super easy. And then I'm twisting my ribbon and this is just some wired ribbon that I found on Amazon and I'm gonna create a little tail. So I'm gonna cut in an upward direction and that's gonna create that really pretty little boutique finish. So here is my first layer. My idea is to do several different layers to give this wreath some nice texture. I also wanna do this all season bow. That way I can reuse it for any season because it's gonna have all neutral colors. So now I'm taking my striped ribbon and I believe both of these ribbons are about two and a half inches wide and I'm gonna give it a twist. You guys can see I gave it a twist. That way my black and white pretty part is facing out and then I'm just going to go ahead and measure. This is also five inches wide. So each one of these loops back and forth, back and forth is going to be five inches wide. And I wasn't super concerned about my tails, but you can also measure them perfectly if you want to. Again, don't forget to cut in an upwards triangle. You're just going to fold the ribbon over on itself, cut in an upwards triangle, and that's going to give you that pretty little dovetail in boutique finish. Now I'm adding in some of this burlap. I felt like the tobacco basket has kind of that farmhouse flair. So I felt like the burlap would be really pretty. And also the tan is going to pull in the tan from the tobacco basket and the sign. So now I'm just going to go ahead and cut in an upwards direction again. And again, then I'm going to go ahead and add in another layer of ribbon. So for the next layer, I decided to use that Mackenzie Childs inspired ribbon. I don't believe this is actually Mackenzie Child's ribbon, but it is a lot less expensive. I'll link some in my Amazon store for you guys, as well as the bow maker and other crafting supplies that you all might need. I really have begun learning how to shop on Amazon. So again, I'm just making a five inch loop on each side and pressing it down. This is so foolproof. I love this bow maker. And you guys know me. I make the Olivia bows, what I call it for reference point. I make a handmade bow and I love that bow for my big wreaths, but for some of these smaller projects, I really feel like the control that you have with this easy bow maker is really nice. Now I'm adding in some of this burlap mesh ribbon, again, about five inches on each side. And then once I have that done, I'm just gonna trim that off. And then I'm going to take the little pipe cleaner and pull the whole bow up. And I wanna twist that pipe cleaner to the back. Now I'm sure there's different ways to make this, but this is just the way that I found that's easiest for me for my project. So I'm going to take and twist tie the pipe cleaner on the back and then I can add that bow to the front. And to add the bow, I just took a little um, floral stem and popped that into the center to secure it to the center of my project. And then my little tip for making a pretty bow is to make sure you really fluffy up your bow, pull all your ribbons out and give them a now nice... Now that my bow is all finished, I'm going to add it to this great vine wreath base. I believe it's a 14 to 16 inch base that I found at Walmart. I have reused this base forever, so it even has a little bit of hot glue on it, but I'm just using a pipe cleaner to attach my pretty bow with. Now I'm taking this garland from Michaels and I'm gonna cut the garland up because I need some greenery and I don't have any greenery and I don't wanna run out and spend money when I already do have some garland here. So I'm just adding hot glue to the end of the garland um, pick here. Now use whatever greenery you have on hand, but I want to add the base of this as my greenery. Again, I want this to be more kind of an all season wreath, something that I can pop out whenever I'm between seasons and I don't want, you know, any wild colors going on. So I'm adding a dab of hot glue and continuing to work with the greenery. The next thing I want to do is add in this pretty little frame with this rooster picture. These are both from Dollar Tree. It's actually one of those skull Halloween frames that I had painted white. And I decided to go ahead and add a little bit more greenery over here to the top. I think a fun way to frame out a smaller sign is to add a frame back behind it. Make sure it's really lightweight, which that little white frame is. Now I'm continuing to clip off my greenery and add more greenery. 
And you guys asked to see the entire process, which I guess sometimes I think I make really weird faces and um, just odd things I feel happen sometimes when I'm making a wreath. And so a lot of times I'll cut some of that out, but here it is in all its full glory, me with my weird faces making <laughs> wreaths. <laughs> so I'm just continuing to trim off the greenery pieces and add them and I'm kind of staggering them. So I'll add one to the base and then one to the top and then take a step back to see how everything looks. Now I'm taking that lightweight Dollar Tree frame and I'm running a pipe cleaner through the base of it and then up in and around the wreath. Again, this step is probably optional and you really couldn't see it a whole lot once I actually had everything on there, but it did peek out. And a lot of times when you're doing wreaths, those layers of dimension are really what makes the eye um, just have a lot to look at. And you guys know I really love over the top designs. So now I'm adding that cute little Dollar Tree rooster picture frame. I picked this up last year sometime. It was kind of a rare find, I feel, <laughs> but always keep your eyes on the Dollar Tree little pictures. Now I'd made a smaller little loopy bow and I'm going to add that to the base of this. This is really how I love to design my wreaths and then give it a good bit of a fluffing. I found some lamb's ear and I decided to layer that in as well. The one thing that I will tell you guys is I really wanted to keep this neutral, so I used different dimensions of greenery. So the lamb's ear was more of a mint green color, and the other greenery kind of trailed and had long stems to it. So that kind of helped things out, and you guys can probably see me disappearing from the frame in just a sec here. It's because I kind of have everything um, strewn about. <laughs> so sometimes when I'm working, it's definitely not perfect. Now here's another little trick to fill out a space. I didn't have as much greenery as I wanted to make it really full. So I'm just taking some of these ribbons and looping them over on themselves. And then I'm just going to take a pipe cleaner and add those into the top. Again, that's just a fun little trick to also bring in some of the uh, layers of texture and ribbons to your wreath. And here it is, the finished product in all of its glory. I hope you all enjoyed the process and all my funny faces that I make when I'm making wreaths. And I also hope that you all are inspired to gather some materials that you might have about and make a beautiful all season wreath or wreath that you have been wanting to make. Be brave. You guys go for it. Have fun with it. Give yourself grace. And if you're nervous about using color, do something like this where you're just using a lot of greenery and some black and whites and some neutrals. So I really, really, really love this one. And I'm excited to find a spot for this in my home. But I also just might really enjoy this in my studio. So comment and let me know what you all think about this. And always I ask you all comment and let me know what is your favorite DIY in this video and which one will you be recreating? I love to hear what you guys are up to and thank you so much for everybody that's posting photos of their home decor and their DIY projects in my Livy's Romantic Home Facebook group page and everybody that's tagging me on Instagram. You all are so inspiring and I'm just so proud of everybody's hard work. Keep up the good work crafting and decorating. I'm so thank so you all so much excited. for joining me on another fun and fabulous crafty decor adventure. It is a true blessing and an honor to have you all here. Don't forget to catch up on the rest of the I Love Fall series playlist. I'm going to link in the description 
description box for you down below. Also subscribe to this YouTube channel and comment down below. I love to hear what you guys are up to, what you guys love to see, and what everybody's doing. Um, I also have an Olivia's Romantic Home Facebook group page. It's totally free to join. It's a great place to socialize. Pop over there, request to join. I will approve your request and you can post photos of your home decor and your DIY projects over there. I also have an Olivia's Romantic Home Instagram page. Follow me over there. I do do condensed DIY videos on all my social media um, just to get you guys energized and get you crafting. And I just really think crafting is so good for your heart and soul. And I want to encourage you all to keep up the good work crafting and decorating. Give yourself grace because everybody is at a different point in their crafting and decorating journey. I just, again, think it's so healthy for you to just fluff up your home and look to the future with so much joy. So thank you guys for being here. I love you to the moon and back. I'm hugging all of your hearts so tight. Have a gorgeous, blessed day. Remember, be kind to yourselves, be kind to one another. Until then, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.